Hi, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Metal Nostalgic Runner. And yes, again, I do not feel like setting up my camera and everything all over like I normally would. But um, we are back to talk more about the Paris Olympics and track and field especially. So, yeah, the Olympics have been Olympicking. So let's get into... Um, a couple of the events, there's been a lot of shockers. Again, this has been a lot of drama. A lot of drama. Of all the Olympics, I would think, honestly, this has been the most dramatic. <laughs> Literally, nothing that's expected to happen has happened. It's been wild. Um, so, to top it off, let's talk about the... Um, I want to say the 1500, the 1500 meter race, um, not the finals, but like, I think one of the rounds, so many dives, so many people falling, so many people falling apart. This is a men's event, by the way, that was one of the notable things that happened. Um, but that's kind of a round thing. Let's go, go get into the finals of like the main notable things that's happened. So one of the notable things that I feel like people are not talking about nearly as much because the it's not as popular of an event is the men's 3000 steeplechase final. The way we have a silver medalist in the United States now and how wild that ended up being I highly recommend go back watching that race because that race was everything. So, um, long story less long, the <clears throat> the guy from Morocco he repeated. So he's an Olympic champion and the world champion, I believe. Or, yeah, I think so. But anyway, he repeated, so he won. Now, what was not expected was he thought it was going to be more. I think he thought it was going to be an easier win than what it was, because. Last around this time last year, the guy who made the team number one for the United States, Brooks, um, he ended up deciding, I'm going to make a race out of this. You're not winning this right away. And unfortunately, by him doing that, though, the other favorite, he like the other favorite took a really, really bad fall and won the barriers. And he had to be like. The paramedics and stuff had to take him away. It, it was bad. I'm I'm glad they didn't show the repeat of him actually falling. Like, they show him falling, but they didn't show how bad the damage was. But it was... The fact that he did not make it off the field himself, um, you know, he is, is bad news. So, that happened. Um, so, we... And also, this is notable for the United States because the last... Evan Jager has been the guy... For the United States has been like literally the one that's helped make this sport steeplechase even be a thing. And he's really been like the only U.S. guy who's been meddling. Um, and so the last time we even gotten on the podium was Evan Jager. Um, and Evan Jager's not that not that old. If you have if you watch my U.S. Olympic trials, he competed in the U.S. Olympic trials, but he is getting older. He's like in his late thirties, so mid to late thirties, I believe, which is pretty you're a veteran okay <laughs> we'll just say that i'm not gonna say he's old but he's a veteran um so that was one thing that was super notable um and then the other race that was the notable notable race was a 400 meter flat for the men's quincy hall i already said during the olympic trials if you watched the u.s olympic trials you knew he was a favorite and watching the rounds it was clear he was a favorite. And that was one of the most dramatic races I've seen in a minute because leading up to the final, I would say like 150 meters, he was in fourth. He did not look like he was going to be in the podium. But the way he was like, I am winning this thing. It's my race to lose. Yeah, he did that. So he put it on the floor and he ended up winning. He ended up getting the gold medal for the United States. And then um, what was also pretty noble was, um, oh, an athlete from Zambia. I believe he got silver or bronze. But everyone basically had national records. 
everyone pretty much hit national records and he ran ran the season best and he was I don't think he wasn't even that far away from like the world record um I I think it was it was a fast race it was a fast final so that was pretty noble and that happened on Wednesday so today <laughs> The finals that has happened today has been pretty notable as well. So, let's get into that next. So, we had three finals that happened today. One that was really dramatic, that was not expected at all, was the men's 200 final. And Noah Lyles, who was a clear favorite, he got bronze. He did not get gold. He didn't even get silver. He got bronze. Kung Fu Kenny got silver, which honestly, that was predicted that he was going to get silver, even though he would not want to believe that. But that was, most people thought that that was how that was going to go. Um, Arian Knighton, I kind of knew he wasn't going to make it on the podium at all because he was under race this year and that whole entire controversy leading up to him being able to compete and be the Olympics that pretty much put a pause and kind of killed his momentum for the whole entire season because as a result so for those who don't know area nine who's like another United States um who was also in the finals for the 200 he had this he served like a suspension a temporary like suspension for like um illegal substances and it turned out it was like some food with hormones in it which that can unfortunately easily happen, but like as an Olympian, you have to kind of really, especially during the Olympic year, you better be watching what you're eating. Um, because the Olympic Committee don't play when it comes to that stuff. Anyway, um, cause it, it, it's not always, I feel like most general public think that steroids or, you know, you're truly illegal ingesting substances of like doping. His, on his case, I ain't gonna lie, I thought that was kind of BS that they even did that to him to begin with, because it does get out of hand, but unfortunately, it's out of hand for people who will do the most to, to basically dope. So that's why it is the way it is, you know? But anyway, so he, I kind of knew he wasn't going to meddle. And then, um, um, the winner was from, um, Oh my gosh. I forgot his name, but he's an African athlete and he was the first he's like the first African athlete to get a gold medal in this event, like ever. So it's it's a big deal. And his story was cool because his um, mom passed away earlier this year, so for him to do what he needed to do and 200 was his like better discipline he i think he got fourth or maybe fifth during the 100 um final so the other noble thing was all three people who podiumed did the double um and we also found out why noel lyles performed the way he did because by the way once he was done he did not look good it, it he looked really really bad and for those who don't know, Noel Lyles, like, has asthma and stuff. Like, he's asthmatic, even though he does what he does. <laughs> and he talks his talk and everything. He's, he's that dude, you know, on top of all the other stuff he is going on. And we find out two days before the event, he actually tested positive for COVID. So he ran that. And um, so he's been quarantining the past two days leading up to the event been wearing a mask and he wasn't wearing the mask before and he's like yeah just so he just was like you know what? i'm gonna try i'm gonna do my best so it's actually kind of actually wild with him being asthmatic and having covid he still got a bronze medal but what that what but what that means is he Probably won't be the anchor for the um, 100 relay now. He's out. Because he looked horrible at then. I mean, he looked really bad. He was very dehy clearly dehydrated. Like, he needed medical assistance. It was a whole thing. It was very, 
very much dramatic to the point where that's kind of why I don't remember the guy who won's name because attention kind of went to Noah Lyles also because he was not doing well. So it was, it was again, these games have been dra- drama, 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 drama. So that's how the 200 men's finals ended. Okay, so next, the event that I was waiting for the most, and honestly, I don't necessarily need to watch the rest of track and field after this, but I'm going to because I do love I do love the sport of track and field. But the next event that happened was the women's 400 meter hurdles with, you already know, um, Sydney McLaughlin Lombroni. As a non shocker, she wasn't <laughs> she wasn't part of the news of she wasn't part of like the um, shocking news. She actually did what she does best, destroyed the field. Fem Cabal who I don't know who that is. I don't know her. And uh yeah, set another world record. And then <laughs> another the thing that was a shocker though, it was US one two and then Fem Cabal. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I don't have her name right now. Um, Cock, I, Cochran? I think her name is Sarah Cochran or Tara Cochran. I don't remember her name at the moment. We're going to put it here like we always do. Because I have a picture and everything. Because we literally talked about all these athletes during the U.S. Olympic trials. But, like, I'm literally reacting to it after I just got to watching it. So, Tara Cochran, I think that's her name. She... And I might be getting her confused with the high jump girl. Because the high jump girl, by the way, not high jump, yeah. No, long jump, not high, long. Long jump <laughs> favorite, she did get gold. So she won, United States. Boop, boop, boop. Um, and that's the long jump girl is the one who actually is married to a um, U.S. Paralympic athlete who's going to be competing after um, the regular, the, these Olympics happen. Like it's, they still have it, but they have it afterwards, I think. Anyway, so, but back to Cochran. Um, I don't remember her first name. I'm just going to say her last name, Cochran, because that is her last name. She is one who was like, ha <laughs> ha, Cabal who? And got second place. And it wasn't like Aline. She got second place. So whatever, so... I'm not going to lie. Now I'm not as upset about the mixed relay. Because I think that mixed relay is why Fem Cabal underperformed the way she did. I think that was not a good idea. I don't, I think that's, that bit her. Her running us down to have Poland, um, not Poland, while the Netherlands win for the mixed relay, even though there was enough time in between. But you have to understand these athletes are performing at a high level. The more you can rest your legs, the better. And I think that is what did it. Because no one was expecting her to get bronze. And Kwai's has kept, it almost was one, two, three U.S. Jordan, who um, is from the U.S., who um, was the third person who got like in... She um, almost outleaned her. Yeah, it was almost a one, two, three. So that was a huge shocker, but I ain't gonna hold you. I was happy about it because I, as much as they want to make this Fem Cabal and Sydney, Sydney McLaughlin Bronley be a rivalry, there's no rivalry. <laughs> Fem Cabal can't see her on the track. I'm sorry. They, and honestly, too, Fem Cabal has never beaten her. So I don't even know why they try. I, I get it. Maybe for, to make the drama happen, but stop it. <laughs> stop it. Okay. Anyway. So then the final event that happened today that um, I watched was the men's um, 110 hurdles. And, uh, man, I can't think of his name. But the U.S. guy who is, has all the world titles but doesn't have an Olympic gold, he got it. 
not really a shocker. Everyone kind of knew that that was going to happen that way. And then um, Parchment, who's the defending Olympic champion for like Jamaica, he wasn't even on the podium. podium. And then um, Charles, um, I think it's named Charles Roberts from the United States, who's kind of like the second best. Pardon me. He got a silver by outleaning another Jamaican and another Jamaican athlete ended up getting the bronze. So that was a big deal because the United States hasn't really been dominant in our sport that was our sport for a minute and now we are again so that's how that ended anyway that actually does conclude everything that's happened so far um up to date for the olympics i'll probably come back on here in a couple of days talk more about the olympics and then i will have um the real housewives of orange county up shortly um probably within hopefully this weekend um if i'm not too busy but anyway that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.